Hi Leo, welcome to the special general tarot reading for the week, including the blue moon in your sign, 11 degrees of Leo. It's a, it's a blue moon, super moon, blood moon. It's a lunar eclipse, and that's on the 31st of January, and this reading goes until February 7th, a week later. So what I'm going to be doing is talking briefly about the eclipse and where it's going to fall in your chart, and then I'm going to pick a card for the, for the eclipse for you uh, from my traditional Rider weight deck, I'm going to pick a an oracle card, the Keepers of the Light Oracle, for that uh, lunar eclipse. And then I'm going to just do a simple um, spread for the week that is from my Morgan Greer deck. So that's how we'll do that. And I just wanted to say that this lunar eclipse is falling in your first house of self. So eclipses are different than regular full moons and... Um, new moons in that there's a sense of destiny with them okay so they're tied into the nodes and of course right now the north node is the transiting north node is in leo and so you do have that south node which is your karmic past in your seventh house of um of committed partnership and the sun will be here at the time of that lunar eclipse because it's a it's a full moon and there's always an opposition between the sun and moon at the time at the time of a full moon so um to have the south node and the sun in that seventh house look at issues involving marriage or the equivalent of that or just commitment issues and how has that played out maybe in the last year um in your you know just reflecting on your life you know are there some kind of karmic patterns that you've detected in your life um and you are going to feel this really strong urge to reinvent yourself you may even have been in that process because of course you had a solar eclipse last august where you may have started something that was to, you know, to change, uh, maybe being um, a new type of a person in some way, and now you've reached that culmination and uh, people are seeing the change. So it can really bring up relationship issues. And I think that some of you have already experienced this. Um, within the last year or more. And uh, so you're just continuing to explore what it means to commit and also what it means to be your own person within the context of relationship, which is very important. Leo is a sign, a fire sign, that is very romantic, sometimes gets accused of self-centeredness, but has a very warm heart and it sometimes is in the realm of relationships that Leos lose themselves. And so this is about highlighting um, what you need or what you need to let go of um, in your own life, but also how it relates to um, your one-on-one -on -one relationships. Okay, so let's um, do some cards here and um, just shuffling my right or white deck. I, I can't remember the last time I used these cards. Okay. <laughs> I already can tell you what that might mean for some people and then we're going to do and these are the, the clips cards. Whoa. Well, you know what? This one just shot out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. Okay. And then we're going to do a very simple three card weekly general carol spread my Morgan Greer deck wow <laughs> okay 
Okay, well, that's interesting. So, um, as the Eclipse card, we get the Knight of Swords. Now, I did also get the Star card for the week. So, there could be, um, for some of you, especially if it's a male, it could be somebody under 40, but if the person is very youthful, this kind of, I think this has fire energy as well, so they may have fire that makes them quite youthful even into middle age. Um, but um, this could be like an Aquarian with Aries or something like that. Now, maybe a sun in Aquarius, moon in Aries. But anyway, and Aquarius is your opposite sign, by the way, so that's uh, noteworthy. But this um, card also connects to lawyers. So as I said, with the, um, the seventh house, that opposition, some of you may decide... It doesn't have to be on the 31st, but it could be after this lunar eclipse, or even before, because, you know, sometimes the eclipses, I've, I've been feeling really kind of, I don't know, on edge. So it's possible that we're feeling this already. And some people may have, and, and even just the, in my own personal chart, the issues that relate to that coming up being discussed and things like that so you may have the same thing where you say that's it I'm filing for divorce and you have no um, sense of lack of clarity it's almost like being fed up and whereas before you may have dragged your feet and felt like a sense of wanting to make things work but this could actually be the person that you're dealing with and and if this is an aspect of yourself you're much more, uh, how, how would I put it, um, very outspoken for some reason. And, it can, and, and again, because the lunar eclipse is falling in your sign, you may, things may come to light that you realize you have been really um, creating this image that is not who you are. And you may be like, I'm going to become much more authentic and I don't care if I step on any toes. I'm going to be my own person. It's like breaking out of this kind of prison of sorts, you know. And usually I wouldn't say that about Leos, but again, um, we are a combination of different influences. So just because somebody's a Leo doesn't mean that they are totally um, in your face or uh, dictatorial or anything like that. They may be kind of cautious, especially if they have some personal planets in Cancer. Uh, people can have a moon in Pisces for that matter if they're a Leo of any sign. So um, then I got for the Keepers of the Light, I got Krishna, which is devotion. It just kind of popped out. Trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized. You are loved unconditionally. And it's interesting that they brought up love because you may be thinking of um, romantic love. And um, sometimes romantic love can, ha you know, have a selfish agenda. And even the, the most wonderful relationships may have an unspoken rule about them where, uh, you know, each person kind of has to fulfill a certain um, role in the relationship. And if things change, then things can get out of whack. And the other person is like, wait a second, you know, this isn't who you were before. I don't like this new person. And we are always evolving. So there's always that risk that people can change. And in a healthy relationship, people allow the other person to change. Krishna is a Hindu god who is known as a Mahavatar, um, Maha Avatar, a great avatar, and embodies divine wisdom. One of India's best loved gods, he is an approachable, kind, loving, and supportive guide. He is a peaceful being with a great love for all people and animals. He is often depicted with a calf or lamb, which is a symbol of innocence, and a peacock feather on his head, which is said to honor the divine feminine. He was the spiritual guide of the warrior soul Arjuna. 
as related in the Hindu epic Bhagavad Gita, which is really the story of choosing love over fear, and helps us move beyond the limitations and wars our ego creates in our mind, and maybe even in the world around us. His twin flame is Radha. So the, the message from this is you have a deep spiritual connection and must trust the guidance that's coming through. Your devotion to the spiritual path has been recognized. It may feel as if you've been on a mental, emotional battlefield, but there are sweet messages of hope around you now. Krishna is here to boost your sense of connection to the divine and encourage you to act from your soul. If a decision needs to be made, ask yourself what will honor your soul and those around you. If you can choose the best for all involved, then you will feel even closer to the divine. Okay. And I, I wanted to just um, point out one thing when they were talking about the divine feminine, when they mentioned Krishna and uh, the peacock feather. And it's interesting because the depiction of Krishna oftentimes is very androgynous. Um, this one, it's funny, this picture is a lot more masculine than I see uh, some some um, artistic renderings of Krishna are oftentimes much more feminine. And Leo is a masculine sign. And if you're a woman, a female Leo, um, ask yourself if you're if you tend to um, take that role role as the aggressor. Can you you know is it something is it very hard for you to be uh, sometimes um, passive and allow and not try to push forward because fire signs oftentimes are very um, out there in the world, the yang force of promoting something, uh, being enthusiastic or even impatient about something. And patience is a very yin kind of a, um, activity. <clears throat> and sometimes it can help not only to reflect and to sit back and to really examine your motives and your um, actions, like in a, in a meditative, reflective um, position, but also in terms of not always having to um, go after things, but allowing them to come to you. So we're looking at just a simple past, present, future, and how it affects you in the week ending on February 7th, we have the, the star card, a card of healing. Something is healing. Something is feel, making you feel like your spirits are lifted. You may have a connection with uh, spirit guides or loved ones who have crossed over. Maybe you're getting signs from the universe that are kind of restoring your hope about something. And this also is connected to Aquarius. And that was why I mentioned it with the above cards. And right now for this week, look for soulmate issues. You may, you know, anyone that you meet and you feel a romantic connection with during this week, um, see if there is a strong sense of familiarity, a sense of comfort, Maybe you are reuniting with somebody who is from your past because the Six of Cups can be, it's like taking a stroll down memory lane. This card, I believe, is connected to Cancer specifically. The other water signs are Scorpio and Pisces. So that may be something that is um, maybe somebody that is that sign or just the simple fact of the emotions being stirred in you. There's an innocence with this card. It can also deal with children. So um, maybe you find out that you can have children after all. Um, Leo is the ruler of the fifth house in astrology. And, and one of the aspects of the fifth house is conceiving children and children themselves. And Leos tend to be very good with children. So Maybe the star card is you find out uh, from the doctor that you can have children and you feel the sense of joy about it because you have been um, fearing that you can't have them. And the outcome, um, the three of pentacles, this is a work in progress. Um, 
Pentacles sometimes can relate to your work issues, but any kind of project that you have, there's teamwork involved. Um, you may be like trying to have a child and trying to, you know, see that tangible results for your efforts. Uh, and there's just this feeling of you're, you're embarking on something that has great potential, that has a um, great potential for a long-lasting um, situation occurring. So these are wonderful cards for you, Leo. And uh, this should be a very high energy time for all Leos in their own way. I wish all the best for you. Enjoy this, um, you know, this once in a, a lifetime eclipse. Because from what I understand, with all the things that are going on, with it being a super moon and a blood moon and, and, a, and a blue moon, it, it hasn't happened for 150 years. So that is once in a lifetime, isn't it? So um, if you'd like a personal reading, please check me out at rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. Otherwise, have a great week. Bye.